Hi, lifelong Mizzou fan here. Actually, that's a lie. I have no correlation to the university, the state of Missouri, yet you wouldn't know based off of Twitter because everyone seems to think that I am a graduate from Mizzou because of I am pandering to my audience about talking positively about a team that did a lot of good this offseason, which is my job to talk about teams that actually showed improvement, which is exactly what Mizzou did. They're building off of an 11-2 finish. They feel like a roster competent and ready to compete for an SEC title. And you won't be shocked with their schedule if they punch their ticket to a college football playoff berth. You won't. And largely that's due to the offense. The defense, I think, will come around underneath new coordinator Corey Batoon and the pieces that were added in. But everything focalizes it on Brady Cook, Luther Burden, and this high-tempo passing attack. But the scary part is that might only be one element to why Missouri is actually going to be competitive. In fact, if I look at the rushing attack, that's a reason why they could go deep in the college football playoffs. So let's go ahead and discuss what's going on SEC Unfiltered. It's Cole Thompson here. Make sure that you like the video, hit the ring notification. That way you don't miss a single episode of SCCU because we're talking college sports every single day leading up to week one and well throughout the chaotic 2024 season. Download the podcast version of the show wherever you get your podcast listening systems. Make sure that also you're following us on socials, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at SEC Unfiltered. If you want to scream, yell, or praise me on Twitter, go follow me at Mr. Cole Thompson and my own YouTube channel at Mr. Cole Thompson. And to keep up with the number one content surrounding your favorite team, make sure you visit secunfiltered.com. This episode's brought to you by Roback. Use promo code SECU for 20% off all joggers, polos, hoodies, shorts, and much, much more. Promo code SECU at Roback.com. So, Missouri returns a ton of offensive production. Brady slinging around the yard. Cook is about ready to lay waste in the SEC. He's get to work with Kirby Moore in year two. That is just a recipe for disaster, and it is a nightmare fuel for defensive coordinators. On top of that, they also return one of the best centers in college football. On top of that, they also built up their offensive line with a multi-purpose chess piece in Caden Green. And just to add insult to injury, Oklahoma's joining the party, and Caden Green is saying, no, I'm not going to be a part of this. I'm going to join a real team. Uh, on top of that, you also bring in Marcus Bryant, who comes on over from SMU. He was a starter the last two years and a pretty damn good one for a roster that just won the American Conference title. And you also have a one-two combination at wide receiver that might end up putting up monumental numbers in Columbia. Luther Burden is without a doubt, in my opinion, the best wide receiver in the SEC, if not the best wide receiver in the country. And then you have Theo Weiss. Theo Weiss, to me, is a perfect Robin to Eddie Batman. Batman is getting bullied by a bunch of other goonies. Well, you know what? Robin's in to save the day. You know that you are going to have a perfect compliment. It's like biscuits and gravy. You got something really cooking up there. But it's the rushing attack that is going to separate Mizzou from everybody else. And it's two names that you need to know extremely well. Cody Schrader, his departure left a souring taste in the fan base because of, you know what? It hurts. Cody Schrader will go down in history, in my opinion, as not only one of the greatest walk-ons in Mizzou football history, but one of the greatest walk-ons in recent SEC memory. Comes on over from Truman State, immediately earns a scholarship, balls out last year, and then says, you know what? I'm ready for another round. I'm going to go lead the SEC in rushing yards. And he did. And it was a big reason why Mizzou was able to be a complete balanced offense last year and find their way to a Cotton Bowl win over Ohio State. Well, now he's in the NFL, but you do realize that Mizzou didn't just settle for running backs. No, 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 no. They didn't just go ahead and say, we're going to go take the next man up. No, they said, let's go add in some more names that are unproven at the power four level, but are proven in the Sun Belt. And that's exactly what they did. A thunder and lightning complimentary piece with Marcus Carroll and Nate Noel. So Marcus Carroll last year at Georgia State was a human pinball. He bounced off of defenders like no one's business. He rushed for over 1,500 yards. On top of that, he also had a dozen-plus touchdowns, if you include the receiving game. Averaged five yards a carry. Had six games of over 5.5 yards per run and over five games of 100-plus rushing yard performances. Dude was a Mack truck. Go ahead and try and bring him down in the open field. Guess what? You probably can't. And now he gets to work behind a potent offensive line that is replacing some talent, but has some good names in replacement to be able to step on up and continue the same path. And then there's Nate Noel, 
Nate Noel last year kind of missed several games, so maybe you didn't hear of him that much. But the junior from Miami, Florida, rushed for 834 yards, five touchdowns, and averaged 4.8 yards per play on 153, 173 carries. The dude's got something to him. And if you get him in the open space, good luck bringing him down. It is a foot race to the end zone. This is a very relaxed schedule compared to everybody else in the SEC. And Mizzou fans, you can go ahead and argue with me and say, yes, the SEC is daunting. I'm not changing that whatsoever. The SEC, there is no off period. You have a down day. You are going to be shown to the door and you are going to be dragged an L back to Columbia. We all know that. But this schedule, when you look at the non-conference games, I mean, they match up against Murray State. Come on. That's one that we can talk about compared to Texas having to play Michigan or Alabama having to play Wisconsin or Georgia having to play Clemson. We can talk about that. That's a game that you should win. And more importantly, that's a game that you must win in dominant fashion just to show the voters how much you care. But with this complimentary piece, let's just say the passing attack is down one day. You aren't able to get anything moving. Brady Cook has two interceptions and it's the third quarter. Well, You know, Michigan actually had a one-two combination last year against Penn State that ran the football and then ran the football and then ran to the left and ran to the right, ran it up, down, left, right, slant ways, sideways, backwards, forwards, and they didn't throw the football in the entire second half and they won by double digits against a really qualified team because they had a good offensive line, they had a good rushing attack. Well, now you have the same thing. This might end up being the best running back tandem in all of college football this year outside of Ohio State. And it certainly has a case to be the number one running back tandem in the SEC. You look at what you bring to Georgia, you don't really have a nice complimentary piece to Trevor Etienne. Montreal Johnson and Trevor Etienne were a really balanced unit. Now, that does not mean that they can't run the football in Georgia, and that does not mean they can't run the football in Gainesville. But I know what I'm getting in these two pieces because if they're so counteractive from each other. One is yin, one is yang. One is thunder, one is lightning. One is pickle juice, one is eggs. They don't mix, they don't do it. They complement each other in different ways, but they also have their own balance that creates its own entity, which is a good thing for Missouri. So let's just say that there's days that you need to trust the ground and pound on third down. Marcus Carroll up the gut for an easy three yards, move the six, keep momentum alive. Let's say you need a big highlight run down the sidelines. Well, that's where Nate Noel comes in, and he's able to go ahead and boot, scoot, and boogie like Brooks and Dunn for an easy six points. The complementary pieces alongside this now stable offensive line, on top of having Brady Cook back in this offense with Kirby Moore, on top of having two qualified future NFL wide receivers in Luther Burden and Theo Weiss, on top of having quality upside in the tight end play, on top of having a solidified defense that I think will come around at some point. Listen, Kane Womack gave calling plays to Corey Batoon last year, and that was a top 20 unit down at South Alabama. You don't think that that can be a translated to the SEC? Give me a break, people. Come on. We all know that's true. I think that Missouri could be something special this year. I think that Missouri could be something extremely special on offense. And I think outside of Quinshawn Junkins and Travion Henderson, there's going to be a race to second place for the top running back tandem in the SEC and all of college football. That means that Nate Noel and Marcus Carroll belong in that category. Sometimes thunder and lightning actually ends up being more than just a little bit of damage to your backyard. It could be a recipe for disaster for teams in Columbia this upcoming season. And it could be a reason why Mizzou at the end of the day is actually playing in the semifinals for a shot at the national championship. Don't look now, but Marcus Carroll and Nate Noel are more proven than Cody Schrader. Schrader got this team on the right path. Now it's time to go ahead and cross that finish line with two complimentary pieces that are going to elevate this offense by tenfold. But let me know in the comment section down below. Do you believe in Mizzou and this up-tempo rushing attack in 2024? Do you believe that Mizzou's offense can take new heights next season? Also, make sure that you like, rate, review, subscribe. Go ahead and hit the follow button and make sure that you also are checking us out on social media, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at SEC Unfiltered. If you want to go ahead and yell at me, say that I'm pandering to an audience or just follow me for good, bad takes, make sure you visit S at, at Mr. Cole Thompson or my own YouTube channel at Mr. Cole Thompson. Leave a one-star review on the podcast system if you hate this type of content. Leave a five-star review if you love this type of content. And to keep up with the number one source for everything in the SEC, for all athletics, the conference that is number one in your heart, make sure you visit secunfiltered.com. I'm Cole Thompson. Until next time, folks, later.